Right, so we're going to jump straight into Power BI Desktop here. Okay, so I'm not sure if you have the opportunity to have Power BI Desktop and these files open whilst you're listening in, I highly recommend it so that you can you sort of work your way through these key aspects of, of Power BI development. If not, 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 not to worry, um, you've always got these uh, resources and, uh, con and this content available to you to jump back when it and whenever you like but when you're working in power bi desktop you've obviously got a number of options before you do anything you know when you're working with a sort of blank canvas here you might think where do i start and it's a very common i guess problem that i see um, when new users start using power bi they are a bit confused it's a bit confusing it's a bit confusing as, as to where you start. Generally, what would happen is a user would go and say, get data. That makes sense, right? But what I want you to always do is to use tr this transform data or, or launch into the query editor, okay? The query editor is the hidden gem within Power BI, and it is an absolute must to utilize, okay? And that's why we've got a whole section on, on using it here, okay? It's basically a tool within Power BI. And it historically was called Power Query, and now it has gone through a few name changes, and now it's called the Power Query Editor. It used to be called just the Query Editor, but now the Power Query Editor. So sometimes I use different names. But basically what this enables you to do is it enables you to transform your data from its rawest form into an optimized shape for or an optimized form for Power BI. And believe me, you will need to use or, or do some sort of transformation. It could be simple, it can be advanced. And almost about 98 to 99% of the time you bring in data into Power BI, okay? So that is why you want to always jump into the query editor as your first step whenever you are bringing data into Power BI. And I like to, you know, and it's also a really good starting point for just when you start anything in Power BI, you should always go into here first. Okay, and within here you can then bring in data from all your different places, but you have so much additional functionality. Okay, you have uh, opportunities to transform your data into unrecognizable shapes, your data tables than what they were historically, or they might be in say your Excel or your Excel um, files or your your database, your your cloud database um, uh, programs, etc. Okay. And I'm going to show you like a number of different things that you can just get going that we need to clean up even with the data that we've got in our example, okay? So what we need to do first is we need to bring in the data, okay? And now the biggest difference, like the biggest sort of thing to, to differentiate between sort of having your data directly in Power BI versus starting off within the query editor, having it in the query editor, is that you are doing a query here, okay? So when I, when we, so I'm going to click into Excel because I need to go and um, source my data from my X, our Excel file in the resource pack, right? So I'm going to double click on the Excel file and I've got to actually delete that file from my um, computer actually. So I've got to delete it. So you might get that as well. Um, but if it's not open on your, on your, on your machine, you've got n nothing to worry about. So I'm just going to double click that. And it's going to create the connection and then what you've got here is you then then you get a pop-up box and you can select what you want to place in um, your model right now what you've got here is you'll you'll see that I've got some different icons now the reason why they are different icons is that these are representing the actual worksheet but these here these the, these icons up here is actually referencing a specific table and table name inside of my excel file now my recommendation is to always try and wrap your data up in a table inside of your worksheets the main reason is is because it just simplifies what the query editor needs to look at when it is actually retrieving data if you say had some erroneous data on a on a worksheet outside of your main data fields right your main data fields within an excel worksheet Power BI would get confused. And so with a table, you reduce that risk. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multi-select all of these different um, data tables in my worksheet. And what's going to happen, and this is really key here, 
is that we are going to basically take a screenshot. We are taking a screenshot or a screen grab or um, of that data. We are not physically transferring data from that Excel file into my Power BI model or copying it or duplicating it basically. We're not duplicating it. What we have here is basically just a screenshot of the data. So not much memory is taken up in Power BI at the moment because we, we need to um, use this sort of screenshot of the data to then manipulate it and clean it up and make it perfect before we then commit it. So when we go, when we eventually go close and apply, we're going to commit this data uh, into our model. And so the data will then physically be then transferred into our Power BI model. Okay. Right. So I've brought data in. That's the that's the, the that's the first thing that we need to do. Okay. What we're going to do next is I'm going to give you um, a few examples of some like really simple transformations that we could do. Okay. But basically, you know, just to just to round this video off, you know, what what have we got here? So within here, we've now got um, down this left hand side, we've got all of our queries, which hold which house all of our information. So all of the information that was in Excel is now um, uh, as a query has been queried into our query editor. We've got all the sales information as well, right? And from here, we can, using the ribbon, do a lot of transformations on our data, okay? We, uh, we can, if you have a look up here, the transform rib, um, part of the ribbon, we can you know, do lots of different things, transpose, reverse rows, change the data types, um, we can replace values, we can we can delete, we can split columns, whole range of different things. And we're going to go over some of these shortly. We can also very easily right click on a column and we've got a whole range of different things that we can do there, lots of different transformations. <clears throat> and what you'll see in a second is that you can layer one transformation over the other. It is recorded and then uh, basically these trans this transformation work can be totally automated for you. Okay, and this is the this is the powerful thing about this this query editor, um, and it can save you so much time. Just think about you know if you've used Excel historically, how long and and how um, annoying it is to have to clean up your data every time you use it, right? Well, this query editor can automate a lot of that for us. Okay, so I'm going to round this off, and we'll move on to just working through some simple transformations, um, so you can see how you can actually start utilizing the query editor.